you, Marilyn, for having us and for hanging the show and for dealing with all the ins and outs of uh, exhibitions. So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, first how I curated the show. It actually flowed like the river uh, because it turned out that I pretty much knew personally most of the artists, I'd say 90% of the artists I actually knew quite well. There were a couple of artists that I knew from my area that I wouldn't say they were good friends of mine, but people whose work I had seen a number of times in galleries in the upper Delaware region. Um, and uh, there are some people that go back 30 years that I've known, and I never realized why I might have been friends with them, because so many years had passed, and then the river was really the connecting image that, um, even though that artist may not have had the same kind of environmental feelings that I had, uh, yet their work was something that I admired uh, and touched me in, in such a way. And then when I got the whole collection together and selected the artists, I was kind of amazed by that fact that how these people that I knew at different times of my life all came together in the show. So uh, we have uh, seven sculptors, um, seven painters or digital mixed media artists, we have one printmaker, two photographers, and uh, I think we have more than one wall relief, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, so let me uh, tell you a little bit about the environmental problem that happened in my area. And it was getting worse and worse and scarier and scarier, so I said, let me do another show. <laughs> this time I said, I don't want to involve money. I just want to have, uh, I mean, the, sh the works will be for sale, but I just want to make it more educational. And so I decided to contact the Catskill Art Society, which um, I think I had shown there in 2012. I had a solo show there of my work. And they had a big, beautiful space. So originally in the first show, we had two works per artist. So, okay, that is basically the background and how this show got started. I just want to say a couple of words about the three rivers. I'm going to be very brief even though I have more notes. Um, but we are basically, in our area, we have the Hudson River, the Delaware River, and this, in your area in particular here, the Susquehanna River. And um, the problems involved in the Hudson River uh, mostly involves polychlorinated biphenols, which is PCBs. Um, they found that a General Electric plant up near Troy in the Hudson Falls area, which is upstate near Albany, above Albany, they, um, uh, these uh, <coughs> chemicals, uh, PCBs were found in the water, um, large amounts of it, and it polluted the water. It took a long time to clean up, and um, they, they had to bridge this, the soil on the bottom of the river to remove these contaminants. This, what people don't realize is that these contaminants don't go away by themselves. You have to remove them. And that's why the fracking issue is so scary and so toxic, because once you ruin the water, that's it, you know, you don't have clean water again. And then the wildlife, the fish, the um, plants, it becomes a different environment, not to mention it looks like an industrial site. So I'll, um, that's the Hudson River. The, Del um, the Delaware River uh, is, believe it or not, a little bit longer than the Hudson River, 388 miles. and. Um, 15 mil million people rely on the Delaware for its drinking water, New York and Philadelphia. Um, the lower part, I've already talked about the upper part, the lower part is a host to uh, the world's largest horseshoe crab population, commercial fishery. Um, and then the other thing is down by Cad, um, Camden and Philadelphia, um, there's a lot of industry, and so there's tremendous pollution from leaching out of these factories and industrial sites. 
and devastating effects have happened to the crabs and migrating birds and populations. Um, there's also pipelines that go through the Tennessee pipeline. So that's so much for the uh, Delaware River. It has problems with, uh, believe it or not, uh, drugs and uh, pharmaceuticals that um, uh, get leech leached in through toilets um, to the water. There's also um, polluted urban runoff. Um, there's ag agricultural and stormwater pollution and acid mine drainage. You just, um, this about a month ago, there was a tremendous mine leaching of that toxic yellow mustard stuff that went into the Colorado River and actually two other rivers that led into the Colorado River. So, I mean, this is going on all over the country. It's horrendous that we're letting this happen. And it was the Environmental Protection Agency that actually did the damage in Colorado. And they apologized for it, but hey, the river is yellow. Um, so, if this isn't enough to motivate anybody, then I don't know what is. <laughs> So now we're going to go around the room and do a gallery walk, and we're just going to have one or two lines about uh, each person's work. And um, I'm very thankful to all the artists. There are about uh, six of us here, and uh, maybe you all ought to come up front for a minute um, so everybody gets to see you. And then later on, as we're talking about your pieces, you can stand near them. So we got uh, Joy Krebs, who did this piece here, and another one, Nancy Wells, and we have uh, Fran Kornfeld, and Rikaru Okamoto. Uh, so the rest of us uh, didn't make it here.